Our guest today is super passionate about group fitness, and she is here to help you take your Group X program to the next level. Thanks for joining me today on the Fitness Business Podcast. If this is the first time tuning in to the Fitness Business Podcast, welcome to the FBP family. We have over 450 episodes with a variety of topics and guests for you to enjoy. You can listen to the entire catalog or you can pick through the episodes. Go to fitnessbusinesspodcast.com for our complete selection. If you're a regular listener, thank you so much for your loyalty. We appreciate you coming back week after week and episode after episode. It's great to be back for another educational episode at the number one podcast for the fitness industry. I hope everyone out there listening is having a great day. I am your host, Dori Nugent, and Vanessa Leone joins me today to help you fire up your group fitness program. Vanessa is the founder of Exercise to Experience and has taken her 15 plus years experience to design a six-week retention handbook. Vanessa's episode will begin in less than two minutes. First, a huge thank you to Hapana for supporting our show. This podcast is brought to you by Hapana. Hapana is a cutting edge membership management solution prioritizing insane engagement. Hapana puts your brand first so you can facilitate deep, meaningful connections with clients and members to book, pay, consume content, and build community. Hapana partners with fitness brands in both the boutique and big box segments that want to drive efficient operations and maximum engagement with clients and members. And they do this by providing direct world-class support with a passionate team who cares about your success. To see how you can transform your brand, go to Hapana.com and ask for a demonstration. Hapana, engineered for engagement. Again, I would like to thank Jaron and his team at Hapana for supporting the Fitness Business Podcast. Hapana is constantly evolving, so check them out at www.hapana.com. Get your pen ready now for Keep Me's Fit Bizpiration. Vanessa, we have our Fit Bizpiration question for you, and that is what are your three top tips? to acquiring more members and keeping members longer. First thing, I'm really glad I didn't have to say what you said because I would definitely not have said that properly. (laughs) But my three tips are, so the first thing is audit what you measure. So as a business, are you measuring anything in relation to group exercise at all, number one? Or if you are, what are you measuring and, and what are those measurements giving you? Uh, Is it giving you relevant information that you're using on a day-to-day basis or a week-to-week basis, or is it just kind of sitting there and you don't really know what to do with it? So the first thing is audit your measurements. Second thing is grab some feedback. So you want member feedback about your classes. You want member feedback about your instructors. You want staff feedback about your classes. You want staff feedback about your members, and you want staff feedback about your business as well. Without that, Without ordering, auditing your measurements and without feedback, it's really hard to acquire or to keep members because you don't know what you're doing right and you don't know what you're not doing is right and what you what can you improve on. So the third thing is figuring out what the gaps in your knowledge or the gaps in your measurement are. When I spoke to MindBody about group exercise statistics in facilities, in, in small group facilities, the things that I was looking for uh, to be able to deliver some statistics to the group exercise world, to the fitness industry, they don't measure them. 90% of businesses aren't measuring these key statistics. And there's no way that we can acquire new members or retain the members that we have if we're not utilizing our CRMs and the stats and the reports that they currently have 
so that we can then grow so that we know either do I need to hire out and get someone in for learning and development for my staff to level them up so that my classes are all the same week, day in, day out, week in, week out? Or do I have a timetable issue where there's too much of the same thing or not, en- not enough diversity? My client, my members want more diversity. Or are you even measuring how popular your classes are? Who, who are your top instructors? Are you rewarding these people? What, what benefits are they going to get if, if they consistently perform for you versus the people who aren't consistently performing? And what are you doing about that? And so without those key elements, there's, in my opinion, there's no way that you can then grow. You haven't got a foundation to start upon. And that's what I think that everyone who runs a group X business should, should go away and start with for sure. Next week, Dr. Sarah Marion returns for our second episode in our series, Generations in the Gym. Millennials will be our focus, and Dr. Sarah will explain, according to Murphy Research, what they are looking for in a gym and how incorporating mental wellness into their workouts is a key component. After this week's full interview, I'll introduce you to Dr. Marion, and you'll hear why you need to come back next week for her episode. Want to sell more memberships, improve your retention, and maximize your non-dues revenue? Then take a look at KeepMe. KeepMe is a smart automation platform that's helping fitness operators increase their revenue across the entire membership lifecycle with some pretty amazing results. KeepMe customers have consistently achieved lead generation rates above 60%, increased their average length of membership by 12 months, improved their non-dues revenue by 35%, and saved 16 to 20 hours a month per team member. We absolutely love this tool, and we think you will too. To learn more, head to www.keepme.ai and book a demo today. Okay, FBP family, it is now time to transition into this week's interview with Vanessa Leone. Thank you so much, Vanessa, for coming on the Fitness Business Podcast. So great to be here. Thank you. Yeah. So exercise to experience, you know, I have to admit, I had to shoot you a little email and ask you a little bit about what this company is. You're the co-founder and you sent me a beautiful email with a very clear description that basically in a nutshell, and I'll let you go a little further in depth, but for one, you are a instructor education platform. And number two, you also try to work with clubs on retention with instructors and also instructor assessments. Why don't I hand the mic over to you and you can expand on that a little bit. Great. Thank you. So we're a very small business. It's myself and my co-founder at the moment. And we came into the space quite literally in April 2020. When we decided while everyone was at home, we'd put our first instructor course on available for instructors. And we knew that there's quite a gap in the market in terms of leveling up group exercise instructors. I'm a PT as well by trade, and I've done a million courses for becoming a better personal trainer and different aspects of personal training. And the frustrating thing about group exercise is that if you want to become a better group exercise instructor, you generally have to do a different course. You have to do a bar course or a Pilates course, or you have to go do yoga teacher training. And it's very specific to the actual element or the style that you're teaching. There's nothing really out there about just how to be a great exercise instructor. And that's where we have brought our skills from there. Emma, my co-founder, is a performer at heart, and I am a science geek at heart. And together, our kind of yin and yang works really well. Uh, We've both also been group exercise managers and we've worked in small business studios. So we didn't realize how much we kind of had until we put it all together and on paper. And over the last few years, it's really developed not only from the instructor training platform, which is what we first developed, but then coming towards the back and letting businesses know how important your learning and development for your instructors are ongoing. Because if you keep them happy, if you keep them really well educated, they'll stay in your business and then your members follow your instructors, particularly in the group X scene. Like if you, if you think of soul cycle, if their instructor isn't at that particular club anymore, they're, they're going, they're leaving to follow that instructor. And, and, and we see that a lot. So that's, that's the main frame of our business right now. 
Yeah, I know you have over 15 years experience being, like you said, in the fitness industry as a manager and just being part of the Group X experience. That's one of the reasons why we wanted to bring you on the show today. We just thought you probably would have a lot to offer to our listeners out there that engage in group exercise. Yeah, thank you. It's I'm I myself at the moment in a really interesting spot because I'm not in big box. I don't own a group exercise studio myself and I do more than just instructing. So I kind of help the businesses that I'm working with by giving a really unique perspective. You, you can kind of step in as the middle person in between your group exercise instructors and your management and really figure out what's needed within the business to help them grow, whether it's member retention or whether it's instructor upskilling, whether it's a bit of a timetable audit, you know, figuring out are their classes stale, is their programming working? And it's a really well-rounded offering that we can give to people and we do it because we know how transformative group exercise is you, you yourself you would know and you said exercise instructors are the mo- they're the most passionate people in the room and they're the ones who can really create so much change and and so much feeling to so many people i really love it out of everybody in your staff they're the absolute most influential i spoke at ursa on this one year and i'm like who who are the most influential people at the club? Group X instructors. They're the only person there, the only employee that can easily have 20, 50 people in front of them that you have their un- undivided attention for anywhere between 30 minutes and an hour. You are on the money. That is one of our first platforms that we used as well. It's, you know, they're the Instagram influencer of your business that they are the front and center of it. And if they're not the ones shouting your message from the rooftops, if, if you know, if they're shouting something else, then that that's really going to reflect either really poorly or really, really beneficially on your, on your, on your brand. And yeah, I just think they're really underrated in the fitness industry. So we, we just want to lift it up. We want to really highlight it. I love that. I love that. So exercise experience, you mentioned a little bit about what it is, and it was born back in April of 2020. You have a six week retention handbook that maybe a lot of our department heads out there listening might be curious about. Can you expand on what that is? Sure. It's a short course and we have it immersed in a little Facebook community so that it's really interactive. You can ask questions. But it's a series of videos and a couple of documents, and we take you through how to run an instructor assessment. So much kind of like a a mystery shop, you can understand the inner workings of your classes and how they directly affect your business. Now, a lot of business owners don't necessarily know what to look for when they go in and do an instructor assessment, particularly if they're not an instructor themselves. So we kind of take them step by step into a really basic instructor assessment or a class assessment, either or, so that they can get an understanding of how their classes and instructors reflect their business and their brand. All right. Now, it's very obvious that programming is super important for group exercise businesses. I'd like to hear because, you know, we have different group X managers come on or people have online programs and they always give their two cents about this. I'd love to hear with your 15 plus years experience, why you think it's so important. Yeah, great. Thank you. It's, I come from a different background initially where I used to work in high performance. I used to work with athletes. So I've got a science background and you know, really got into the nitty gritty of it. And for me, your programming is how your branding feels. So you can put all your messages out there. that Our group exercise studio is inclusive and we're friendly and we're, you know, we're fun and, and all of that kind of thing. You've got all that messaging, but then you walk into the space and it's intimidating and it's really challenging and the instructor's very clicky. Now, all of a sudden, your programming, yes, it's okay to be challenging, but it's not fun and it's not inclusive because your programming is too hard for most of the people who want to walk into your gym when they see your branding. And I find that there's a big gap in in our fitness industry where we're currently really only catering for people who are already fit. We create group exercise classes to be really hard, to demand so much of people's nervous systems, to, you know, really get them sweaty and lift heavy. And I think a majority of people 
particularly people who aren't engaged in fitness at all, they don't need that. They, they need, they need the inclusion. They need the take it easy. They need the, here's the slow introduction and COVID's helped to bring that message a little bit more into the, the mainstream. But I think we need to go deeper and, and programming is the complete reflection of how you want your business to run. And again, if you're, if you're a business owner and you're not in the fitness side of it, it, it's hard to see the connection between those two. And for me, the programming, as Emma would put it, is the avocado on your toast. You know, you, you can make it at home yourself and it's great, but it's so much better when it's got all the bells and whistles and it actually says what it does, right? That's good. I love that. Yes. I've I've heard that before. That is very, very good. All right. Let's talk about group X and small group personal training and why does it work so well together? Yeah. Great question. It's, it's the feeling of community and personalization that people are really looking for when they're wanting to engage in fitness group exercise is proven to be one of the biggest retention builders for your club. So if if members are engaged in group exercise, they're likely going to stay for longer. If they're engaged in small group training, they'll stay for even longer. If they're engaged in personal training, the relationship again increases. Now, there's only one thing that trumps personal training, and that's personal training with group exercise. So the combination of the two or having having those multiple avenues of connection, we know keeps people within businesses for longer and longer and helps to create behavior change. And I think for a lot of group exercise businesses who don't offer maybe small group or one-on-one, I think there's a lot of learning that you can take in from those aspects of one-on-one. It's the feeling of personalizing certain aspects of your member journey or your group exercise classrooms so that the people who are in there actually feel like they're being connected with, actually feel like they're noticed and the instructor knows who they are and, and what what injuries they might have or what they're working towards. I think that there are a lot of lessons in how trainers engage in their ongoing training with their clients that you can replicate in a group exercise setting and, you know, give your members a really detailed questionnaire and have that information handy and ready for people to study and have a look at so that when, when members walk in, you know that you've got Dory's coming in. Yep. She loves, I'm just going to make it up now, body pump and her birthday's in this, this month. And, you know, she's got two kids. So, oh, great, I'm going to ask I'm gonna ask her about how our kids are when she walks in and see what she says today because that's how I know and I'm going to start that relationship with her as she comes in and prepares for a group exercise class. And, and now we've personalised your experience within that group exercise room and you're also working with your instructors to create personal relationships, which again, we know the more personal a relationship, the more fun the environment that they're working in, the longer they'll stay. So small group training, uh, whether they're training facilities or small group fitness boutiques, like your boutiques, I think they absolutely rock it when it yeah. comes to recognizing whether this was like their 100 hundred cycle ride or whether it's whatever their 50th class that they took. And I've seen them do some really cool things with decorating bikes or they have signs made that they get their picture and post it. hundred percent. And I think big box particular, I mean, I I've come from big box. The focus is sales. We know that there's an attrition. And so in, instead of focusing on keeping the members, the bigger push has always been to find new members, call those leads, get them converted over. And and I think that the conversation needs to be looked at is if you could spend half the time with your new leads and half of that time actually talking to the members who are in your facility, you probably won't need to recruit as much because you'd have way less attrition. You're actually there facilitating connection, community, culture, whether they're within your group exercise rooms or whether they're not, regardless, this is for everybody now. If you're if you're really looking at creating that space where people feel welcome, where people are actually having a personal relationship with someone, it's going to create a huge impact for them in their transformation in their life. It gives them that safe safe space, which 
we when we're entrenched in the fitness industry we know we feel that safe space is so welcoming and so warming and that's why we were all so devastated when everything closed but people who don't have that personal relationship within that they're not going to feel safe there they, they're going to feel nervous and intimidated and everyone's staring at them and you want those people more than anyone to feel safe and you want them to feel accepted and i think group exercise instructors specifically can be a really, really useful person to connect with people because they're the ones who are already doing the connection work. They're already in front of them. If the person's going to that class, chances are they like that instructor. They're not going to go to an instructor that they don't like very often. And the more you like someone, the easier it is to connect and the more you want to stay. Mm -hmm. It was interesting. I interviewed uh, a lady. It's it's probably been maybe two years by now. Joanna Rawbone. She talked about introverts, and she talked about introverts in Group X. And it's funny because you always think Group X, everybody's loud, you know, hooting and hollering and yelling. And she's like, "Listen, just to let you know, there's introverts in those Group X classes. We kind of like it because we feel like we can hide." We yeah. love we love watching everybody else hoot and holler and be wild and loud and sing along. She goes, we just don't want to do it, but we're we enjoy it. So it's interesting how Group X can really touch different personality types. It's it's so engaging. It's so entertaining. Yeah, you're right. And funnily that you said that because we actually include that as a part of our instructor training. <laughs> we go into that into that very detail is that you're you're gonna cater for everybody. And it's really important that your introverts don't don't feel, you know, like, oh my God, I, I have to be included in that. You know, they're allowed to hide in the corner if they want to. You really did a great job talking about group bags with retention of members. Now I'd like to shift gears and talk about group bags and retention with your own staff. I just interviewed uh, Brian Weaver and he was awesome. He was uh, he talked about sales and he talked about being versus doing. And sometimes we're so engrossed in the doing that we forget to get about being, being, you know, being in the program, our, our mind being present and being focused. I'd love for you to talk about the aspects of, of experience and, and how they're important for retention in group exercise businesses, both with instructors and staff. Yeah, great. So I mentioned having a safe space for your members. It's really important that you have that safe space for your instructors. Uh, if you're looking traditionally at big box or, or, or even in boutiques, quite often your instructors are your least paid and most contractor based agreements or type employment within the industry. They kind of come in and come out because they might be teaching multiple classes at different venues. And this kind of way of living for instructors is really challenging. You know, they're, they're, they're trying to fill up their timetable with as many classes as possible. And, you know, staff rooms in gyms often are there and feel help, like feel safe for the people who are there all the time and don't necessarily feel really welcoming for the people who are coming in and out and not necessarily are there. So I think having that space and, and making sure that your instructors know that they're allowed to use spaces within the gym for themselves, whether they just want to sit and rest or whether they've got work to do, that they feel comfortable being there is a really big one. And I talk about like the three things that you can give your instructors, which is learning and development is number one, your pay and your perks. And those are the three things that are going to influence how you keep your instructors. The one that we help with is learning and development. So as I mentioned before, because instructors don't necessarily have the same career path as say a personal trainer, where there's lots of courses available, where there's lots of availability to upskill and really transcend and be and become niche or to get quite a lot of pay for what you do. As a group exercise instructor, you're quite limited to pretty much the same pay rate nearly wherever you go and you don't you're not really getting anything for it other than the satisfaction of doing your job, you know, having those members in front of you, which is great, which is why they do it. They're really passionate, but it help it really has a lot of burnout. Their bodies are often overworked. Their voices are often overworked. And so if you can give them some upskilling, some team bonding, 
a growth factor and you know the payment can come into that later but if you're able to facilitate that within your club or uh, hire out so have someone else facilitate that learning and development for them they get growth in their career they might see more bums and seats in their in their classes you might give them more classes based off their learning and development plan and program uh, you can give them rewards for being able to stay with you and, and teach a certain amount of classes because they've done X amount of certain learning and development. And those schemes are very rarely in place unless you're in a, like a boutique and then quite often they don't teach anywhere else other than that boutique anyway. But I, I'd love to see more of that introduced in the group exercise space and, and places for your staff to give you feedback without, you know, feeling like they're doing something bad or that you're not going to listen potentially either is a really, really important one. Hey, Vanessa, great stuff. I really like what you're bringing to the episode today. I have one final question for you. And I just wanted to to ask you, what is a class or an an instructor assessment? And, you know, how does that impact the experience for the members? Great question. It is essentially what it says it is. It is a form or a process to follow where you as the manager, owner of the business, attend a class and you notice or you look for certain criteria and you can take if you're seeing the criteria, if you're not seeing it or if it's at a certain level to or to a certain standard. Uh, you could be focusing on the actual instructor itself or just the general theme of the class. So you can do a couple of different types and varieties. The reason why it affects your member experience is because if you have a whole host of different instructors at different levels all teaching the same class, what you might notice is that class message gets completely changed from instructor to instructor. There is very little to no reproducibility and you might have to work really hard as a business to be able to ensure that your members are actually taking away what you say you're giving. One of the examples that I use who do this really well are Les Mills. Their instructor training and assessment is second to none. It's so, so good. You you know exactly what criteria you need to hit as an instructor, how you need to get better. Is it your voice? Is it your posture? Is it a whole host of different things? You understand what the class is about and what they need to get, what the members need to receive. And a lot of instructors, when they're teaching a class for a business, they don't often get that level of detail from the business as to what they want to teach and what what do you want to give your members from this class and those are the some of the really important questions that you can ask yourself before you even start assessments is okay I've got this class on the timetable what is it what does it say it does and does it deliver what it says it does and then from there you can see if the instructors that you have who are teaching that class are actually delivering on that first part as well. Vanessa, thanks so much for coming on to the show today. And everybody, help me spread the word about this amazing episode. I know Vanessa would really appreciate it. Also, if you have any additional questions for Vanessa, please head to our show notes at fitnessbusinesspodcast.com. And I'll let you in on a little secret. You can subscribe to the show notes and then they will be emailed directly to you. Yep, we've made it that easy for you. (laughs) <laughs> subscribe to the show notes also at fitnessbusinesspodcast.com. In less than a minute, I will introduce you to our upcoming guest, Dr. Sarah Marion. Looking for a gym weight that is gentle on fitness equipment, but tough on eliminating germs? Look no further. Vapor Fresh gym wipes are specifically designed to be safe on all gym equipment. And the fact that they are the only plant-based disinfectant wipe on the market makes them the top choice. Vapor Fresh wipes come in two convenient sizes. The smaller canister is perfect for home gyms and boutique studios, and the jumbo refill roll fits perfectly into the dispensers. Vapor Fresh wipes, 100% happiness guaranteed. Quick Fire 5, sponsored by Hapana. I can't wait to hear what's on Sarah's bucket list. 
It is time for our quick fire five questions. And we have the lovely Dr. Sarah Marion back with us for round two. Sarah, welcome to our quick fire five questions. Hello again. I'm happy to be back. So glad to have you. We're going to learn more about you. So we're going to talk about another bucket list item because we don't just always have one, you know, we usually have, that's why we call it a bucket list. Mm -hmm. So why don't you give us another bucket list item? I have, well, my other, another bucket list item would be, I would love to go to India. I, I was really interested in kind of India and Pakistan as the region and the history and the culture and college, and I have yet to go. So hopefully one day. Okay. Lots of travel in your plans coming mm-hmm. up. Yeah. <laughs> How about a business brain? Whose business brain would you like to pick? This time I'm going to pick Oprah. I think, I mean, Oprah is a really inspiring person who doesn't love her. She came from nothing to become this huge mogul, but she's also just an excellent interviewer. And since I do some of that too, I, I'd love to chat about that. Me too. Count me in on that. We'll have a, we'll have a group chat. <laughs> All right. Uh, what is your most visited page on your website? Well, it is actually the careers page. Next is a blog about mindfulness that we recently wrote, but hopefully whatever blog we come up with next will be the next most visited page. Good, good. All right. And then how about a book? Can you recommend, I know last time you recommended Atomic Habits. Could you recommend another book for us? Well, um, I also, it's related to Atomic Habits. I loved that book, The Power of Habit, which came out now quite a few years ago uh, by Charles Duhigg. And that's where I first encountered fitness as a keystone habit, which it completely is. And I hear it all the time in uh, interviews and you can see it in our data. I think consumers often think you need to start with food. And I say, no, you need to start with fitness. And finally, what would be one oh moment of next week's episode? So millennials have gotten a lot more into health and wellness during the pandemic more than any other generation. It It's like the trend is really amazing and they aren't quitting. They're not stopping. They continue increasing. So more people are doing more types of health behaviors like across the spectrum. It's it's great news for us. And it's, it's really, it's great news for them as a population too. All right. So next week, everybody, please, please, please mark your calendars, set your reminders on your phone, but join Dr. Sarah Marion. She's the director of syndicated research at Murphy Research, and she is going to talk about what millennials want from a gym. Mark your calendars for the second episode of our Generations at the Gym series. Also, subscribe to the show on your favorite podcast player or subscribe at fitnessbusinesspodcast.com so you never miss a show. Thank you to our founding partner, Active Management, our partners, Keep Me, MyZone, ISSA, Hapana, and our advertisers, Rex Roundtables, MX Metrics, and Vapor Fresh. We believe what you leave behind is not what is engraved in stone monuments, but woven into the lives of others. <laughs>